Hey folks, it's been a while. Uh, my wife and I had to move and I'm no longer in my house and my shop equipment is located in my classroom. Uh, today I want to talk to you about the first MOSFET. Your first MOSFET is right off the DCN jack and on this particular board that's located right here Okay, I don't know if you can see that. We'll see it under the microscope. So, uh, your first two MOSFETs are located right here. One, that's the first one, and here's the second one. And you can tell I've been in here. I was showing a student all about this the other day. We're gonna talk about the purpose of it because there are some people that feel that this first MOSFET is optional and it is not uh, it's there for a reason so somebody's brought you in this computer and uh, you have a bench power supply like I do here I have it set at 19.5 volts uh, which is what most computers run on uh, and I've got a, a jack uh, that I really recommend you guys uh, go out and get you a full set of assorted uh, DCN jacks, uh, they're absolutely fantastic. I got mine at Northridge fixed just like I did the uh, uh, the microscope. I absolutely love that. No, I'm not a shill for Northridge. I just like them. Okay, so I have my power on and as soon as I plug this in, voltage drops to 3.5 and all amps are going through. So that is obvious signs of a short. So we need to see what's getting hot. All right, let me get this set in place. I'm gonna turn the power off, plug it in. And now I'm gonna turn it on and see if I can get the camera to pick up that hot spot. I'm not quite sure if the camera can see that, but that is scalding hot, 140, 100, and, uh, we're up to about 150 C. It's getting very hot, and what is it? Well, it's this first MOSFET. So, a person might assume that the problem is the first MOSFET. Well, that is what is keeping voltage from going through. So yeah, that MOSFET is uh, blazing hot and we do have to remove it, but not for the reason you think, okay? So what we're gonna do, let's go under the microscope, get my lighting on it. We're gonna remove it, set it to the side. Give me a sec to let this warm up. Um, while I'm doing that, uh, I am using one of these corded uh, hot air stations. Uh, you hear a lot of people giving them a lot of flack. I've got two of these and they are absolute beasts. Uh, I think they're absolutely fine, especially if you're a hobbyist like myself and you're not doing work all day long, running it all day long. This does the job. All right, let's go to our microscope. We're gonna go down here and we are going to remove this first MOSFET. and we're just gonna set it to the side. All right, now, let's take our power, turn it on, and it's 19.5 volts, zero amps. So you think, okay, problem solved. But you need that first MOSFET, uh, looking here on the microscope, you need uh, your power to go from source to drain to the drain on the second MOSFET into the inrush resistor and into this, uh, this circuit rail. That's where the circuit starts. Now it also, your DC jack bypasses these two MOSFETs and goes to your BQ chip, and we'll talk about that later. 
but we can't just call this fixed. And if you're a novice, you may take a replacement MOSFET, thinking that that was the problem, uh, and you don't have to you don't have to match uh, MOS, MOSFETs numbers exactly. Uh, you have to make sure it's the right type. There's, uh, there's N-type and P-type. This particular MOSFET is a, uh, a P-type. So we're just gonna quickly put this one on. P-type MOSFET takes low voltage on the gate to uh, open up and an N takes higher than the source voltage. That's the difference between the two. Uh, most motherboards these days use N-type, uh, but manufacturers have their reasons for using P-type. So let's uh, get this put in place. Hopefully I have it oriented right. If I don't, I'll just edit the video and reorient it. We'll call that good. And we'll see if we have it oriented right. And it is oriented right. I can already tell I forgot to turn it off. So, I'm gonna show you uh, via thermal camera what we've got now. So this board is rather hot, but you're still gonna see uh, a much hotter spot on that MOSFET even though that's where we soldered. See if you can see that. That's a brand new MOSFET put on there and it's at 190 C. This uh, thermal camera only goes up to 200 C. Hopefully you can see that, okay? So you may think, if you're new at this, well, what's the deal? Uh, can two MOSFETs be blown? Well, yeah, they can. Two MOSFETs can be shorted, uh, but that's not what's going on. What is going on is your system is sensing a short somewhere else, and it is purposely shorting that first MOSFET so that it just, all the amps run through it and back to source, and that's why it's getting hot, okay? It's keeping that gate constantly on, and it's just running back to source and getting hot. That is to protect the rest of this motherboard. All right, so go into the microscope. Let's go ahead and remove uh, that replacement MOSFET, which I just pulled off of a, a random motherboard. Take it off. There we go, and I'm gonna sit that elsewhere. And remember that this is our original MOSFET. Okay, so what do we do now? We need to find the problem. And the problem is a short somewhere. So, we're gonna go off of this current sense resistor and we're gonna inject voltage. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to solder a wire if I can find it, give me a second. I had a wire. It's amazing I can find anything here. Oh, here's one. I had a bigger one. Okay. So I'm gonna solder a wire just right there on the the 
the input or inrush resistor. Use a little bit of solder. The solder already has some flux in it. Uh, speaking of solder, I really highly recommend you use very low melting solder, around 220 to 250. Uh, some of you may be frustrated with uh, your soldering, and that could be because, well, your solder's too difficult to heat up. And I have found uh, solder that melts uh, between 200 and 250 is optimum. You can manipulate it however you want to. Okay, so I'm at 350 now on my uh, iron. I'm just gonna quickly add a little solder there. You guys saw how easy that was to put on. That's lower melting solder. And in fact, my uh, soldering iron is going up to 400. This is a very short wire, so I'm probably gonna burn myself. Okay, very easily just soldered a uh, jumper wire onto the board. And I'm gonna use uh, the a ground point. I'm not gonna solder a wire on the ground point. I'm just gonna hook it on. And in fact, I'm gonna use an extension. Uh, and you may ask, well, why do you just solder one wire on? Well, sometimes I solder two. And there are some people that you'll see just poke with their uh, power supply. Yeah, uh, uh, I've done that, but it's difficult to maneuver your, uh, it's difficult to maneuver your thermal camera when you're doing that. So uh, soldering a wire on is, makes it to where you can pick it up and look around it, maybe even feel with your hands what's getting hot. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm not going to inject 19.5 volts. I'm going to inject one volt and I'm going to lower the amps to two amps. Why am I doing that? Well, that short can be anywhere. It could even be on your V-Core or your PCH or your GPU if this had a GPU or your RAM. And 19 volts will kill it if, it, if it's a MOSFET that is shorted open, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna inject just one volt and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn on my thermal camera. I love my thermal camera, but it does take a long time to boot. Now I'm pretty sure that you're going to be able to, uh, would be able to sense this short with or without a thermal camera. Okay, give me a second. I've got a problem here. I didn't connect this to my wire. All right, so just one volt is all we need. Okay, so at one volt, we're taking a third of an amp, all right? And we need to take a look around and, and see what's getting hot. Well, I can see something getting uh, hot, but I don't think it's on this side of the board. See, that's the advantage of being able to, uh, uh, be, uh, of soldering a wire. And here I found a hot spot. Hopefully you can see that. There's my hot spot. All right. And it's not that hot, but it is definitely shorted. Okay, so I'm gonna take a closer look at it, turn the power off, and it was in this area. Let's go to our microscope. Our short was in this area. It's one of these three caps. 
so uh, a trick that uh, you guys have probably seen but or if you have not I this will be new to you uh, you can use alcohol to determine exactly which one it was so I'm going to just take a, a little bit of alcohol oops and I'm going to put it on my little swab here because we don't really need a whole bunch and we're just going to put on a little bit right here all right and there's there's no voltage going through so we're going to hit the voltage and see which one evaporates first and I don't know if you guys can see it but I can definitely see it looks like that middle one is evaporating first so I'm gonna kill my power let's do that again let's change our lighting a little bit maybe we could see it a little bit better here we go uh, let's get a little more let's get a little more on here all right there we go turned on and yeah the middle one is evaporating before the two on the side so it's this cap all right so let's go ahead and get rid of it Now, now I run this on full blast, uh, 480, uh, full air. I have no problems with anything. So you don't have to rush out and buy an Atten or a, a Unity or a whatever the other high dollar brand is. So I'm just going to take this cap off. There we go. Burnt my thumb. Now we'll undo all of our our wires. And we'll put our MOSFET back, the original one. Let's put it back on. I have to fix this anyway because it's a student's uh, computer. Well, it's my computer. It's a student's computer that they're working on, working with. sticking together I don't like it doesn't have to be pretty as long as it's on pins are touching what they're supposed to touch let's see if this is the right one okay Do we still have our power plugged in no we don't Let's see what we get. Okay. Uh, now, if you could see, we're at 19.5 volts 
and 10.5 milliamps. So the problem is cleared. So the purpose of that first MOSFET is to protect your motherboard. That was not the problem, it was helping, okay? Uh, so if you suspect that it's your first MOSFET, yes, you do need to take it off. But after inject voltage, find a short, take it off, then put your original MOSFET back on. And yes, of course, run your normal tests. I'll show you what those normal tests are in the future. Guys, I know I flubbed up quite a bit in this uh, first video, but uh, hey, uh, that's the way it goes. It's good to be back. I'll see you next time.